Yo, what's up? It's your boy Currency365. Hope you guys are doing well. Legends never die. They stay in our hearts. Uh, if you want to support us, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also you can come down here and hit the join button uh, under the video uh, or in our channel uh, section. And you can also join our Patreon, patreon.com slash currency365. And uh, we also have Cash App and also PayPal uh, for support if you want to sell some seeds. Peace out. God bless. Enjoy the video and keep the movement going. Legends. Bye. Guys, uh, happy new year. <clears throat> it's kind of crazy that we're in uh, 2024. You know, it feels like just hit Christmas and we're already starting the new year off. But, you know, it's been a while. So um, it's good to be back talking to you guys. I see we got Curve Finance here right now and JB are up here. So good to see you guys and, um, you know, looking forward to catching up and talking. But, you know, definitely been some interesting uh, market moves since we last uh talk with each other right like bitcoin's now trading at like i believe it's still around 44k 43 44k i don't know when we last spoke it was definitely probably around what like 30k something like that low 30s and then it finally kind of broke out uh same with jasmine right we saw a little move kind of like the past week or two i think jasmine got all the way up to it was around like 0.0075 something like that um then the market kind of dumped right you know we're following bitcoin and then we've gone back down but um you know really exciting stuff we're into a new year uh, a lot of you know excitement regarding bitcoin etfs regarding the bitcoin having coming up um you know just hopefully kind of that that change from the the bear market to the bull market that's what we're all waiting for but in terms of the market, you know, things are definitely looking up. So what do you guys think? We got Kerr and JB. How are you guys doing? Hey, man. Doing great. Uh, good to be back with uh, everybody on the call. I know it's, uh, she, geez, it's been, what, maybe a month or two, something like that. Um, yeah, you, you know, uh, I, I've been I've been following it daily. Um, obviously I haven't been posting any videos recently, um, just been tied up with holidays, but, uh, you know, I tend to look at, uh, the traditional markets, uh, and, and see what's going on with them because, you know, I remember prior to this last year or so, everybody kind of thought that, uh, crypto was its own thing, right? And cr crypto could be up while the other markets could be down, et cetera. And I think over this last year, we've kind of found that if the other markets are, are down, crypto's down. If the other markets are up, crypto's up, right? And that's kind of where we're, we're trending with all this with, uh, with Bitcoin. And, you know, on the, on the Bitcoin front, um, it, it's definitely interesting, the, uh, the ETF talk. Now, uh, obviously, Gary the Clown is, is kind of uh, blocking the uh, – he, he's blocking us from getting a touchdown there. Um, Hopefully uh, that that happens regardless. You know, at the end of the day, you got one guy in an institution in the way of billions and billions of dollars. And I would be willing to bet that the billions of dollars are going to win. So I, I think the Bitcoin ETF uh, deal is going to happen. Um, when exactly? Uh, to be determined, you know, but... Uh, you know, the market as a whole has been kind of riding that. Now, Jasmine right now, you know, looking at the chart, obviously it's dropped off a little bit. And I'm sure we'll kind of talk about, you know, some of Hara's um, latest posts. I mean, I've, I've got some thoughts on that, and I'm sure everybody on the, on the call does as well. So, uh, yeah, looking to get into it today. Hey everyone. Uh, yeah, sorry if uh, you guys can like, hear me driving and stuff. Uh, I am I am driving. <laughs> um, I will mute myself kind of between, so like there's no echo or anything like that. But yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, it's great to hear from everybody. I know it's been quite a while since the last space, and yeah, definitely a lot has happened. Um, it's great to see, as Kerr was kind of alluding to, a little bit of a divergence from from the traditional markets. Um, that's one that I, I follow more closely than than crypto. Uh, funny enough being that I'm, I'm in crypto, but 
uh, chart watching on a daily, I think would drive me mad. But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of the discussions that we're going to have because there certainly has been a lot that has happened between um, now and since last we spoke with all the developments that kind of we've seen in all the releases from Hara. Yeah, sounds good, JB. Don't don't chart and drive, that's for sure. Uh, Rob, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, doing pretty good. We just got power back here in New England about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. We've been hit with that nor'easter. I've cleaned out my driveway twice today. But uh, hopefully that will turn around this week and the charts will start turning around this week. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, kind of waiting to see. We're still in that kind of gray area of like, uh, is it is it actually bullish? We going bearish? You know, we got to wait and see. But um, even just last night, I think Hara, you know, we could start from there with what he just tweeted about. Uh, it was from Dime, right? He talked about there's some, uh, I don't know if that's how they pronounce it, Dime or Dime, but basically an article about uh, blockchain technology and uh, carbon credit trading, right? So that's something that was in the 2023 roadmap for Jasmine. Um, this is utilizing blockchain for carbon credit, carbon credit trading. Um, and where, uh, I'm pulling up that article right now, basically they said that, you know, with their proprietary blockchain technology, um, a view to release next spring, um, Jasmine's going to actually build a, um, uh, what are they calling it? It's like a con consortium chain, right? The NCCC, but they're also creating a carbon credit distribution market. So kind of similar to the distribution of NFTs, that's kind of what their article was explaining, right? Jasmine is actually going to get that marketplace for um, carbon credit trading. And, uh, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting because that was in the roadmap and they were talking about getting that ready for the coming spring. So um, I don't know. What do you guys think about that latest post? If anyone got the, the chance to check that out. Well, one of the things that, about the carbon credit, like I don't think carbon credits are going to solve global warming, but it is the big thing right now. And the number one complaint internationally by politicians and environmentalists is there is zero clarity on carbon credits. And they've done whole news stories on this, how golf courses that have always been golf courses are also making money as carbon credits. And it kind of sidesteps the whole idea of the carbon credit consortium. If they come up with a blockchain, that is seen as a standard worldwide and used for carbon credit trading, that will have a built-in base right there that can go internationally. Yeah, I, I think I would add to that, Rob. Um, you know, I, I, I saw the post from Hara, and I, I read all the comments, right? I read all the hate that he gets in the comments and all that stuff. Um, and people asking, well, you're talking about spring. Is it this spring? Is it next spring? Is it two years spring, 10 years spring? Who the hell knows, right? Um, I, I think the NCCC, it, it is what we thought it was, right? So when it first came out, um, it's Japan-centered, uh, right? It, it's various uh, governments, parts of Japan, uh, that we're going to be getting in on it. Um, I think, you know, making the leap to being something that could be worldwide, they're nowhere near that, right? I mean, first, they, they just need to prove they can do it in Japan first. Um, I think as a community, you know, th this is one of the frustrations of the community is, is simply you give us a piece of news and it's almost like you're rehashing old news, right? Like, you know, when he announced... Um, the Jasmine chain for like the second time and it's still not here. That's, that's almost what this feels like to me. It's like, we're, we're announcing the national carbon credit consortium for the second time. We're saying we're going to build an exchange based around carbon credits. All that's good. Um, but, but we're almost like rehashing it and you still don't have it yet. And then we still don't have a date that you're shooting for. You just say, spring <laughs> right so it's kind of like you know uh i i think it's it's almost like what should be good news is just not put out there very well 
right? And and, and that's that's kind of what this is, is that this could be the start of something great and they could go somewhere with it. And we'd love to know how it ties into Jasmine coin and the Jasmine chain and the Jasmine wallet and see what this uh, exchange or whatever it's going to be would, would look like. Um, but it, it's just sort of a, it's like a statement in the wind, right? Or, or at least that's kind of how I interpret it. Like it's, it's 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 a fluff PR thing that really doesn't have any substance behind it yet, other than those original, um, not really partnerships, but let's say governments that said that they were going to participate in it is part of Japan. Yeah, that's that's well said, Kerr. I, I, I do think there's certainly some stuff that that's left to be desired with it. I, I think one of the big issues with Hara making the post and it's funny because I, I figured he would have been aware by now for this is if it's not directly Matt like mentioning Jasmine coin or he's putting at least a crypto spin on it I don't think it really should be coming from his Twitter because that's his audience you know if he you know got somebody else to say hey like there's this article that's out there and it's Jasmine company related anything that's good for the company is good for the crypto but you can't just put out the company because that's not who you're talking to in your audience. And that's a big wall. Now, as great as the news that I think it is, right, because we've looked into it, we kind of know the context a little bit more of what he's talking about, right? Uh, I think in the article it said, for example, like the consortium chain is already like ready. They're going into testing to actually draft companies in 2024 for spring. And then 2025, some sort of official le like legislation will probably go into play. And they, they announced during that, I think, uh, back in November, they're introducing the NCC token, which is a little bit different than the J credit. But again, this is all stuff that, like, if you looked into, you would know. And at the face value, you would see from the comments of just all the people commenting in there, the next spring just threw them off because he verbatimly took the announcement from 2024 and plugged it into the Januaries. And that throws off a lot of people for no reason. So it was a little bit of a double whammy. Um, again, I think the whole, he's a finance CFO specialist and not a marketing only goes so far. You, you, at a certain point you need a marketer <laughs> and, you know, we're beating a dead horse with that one. So I'll just, I'll stop there on that. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. And, you know, it's interesting cause I, I saw a tweet from, from Lil Bidman the other day, or it might not have been a tweet, even just a comment where he said, you know, with all the Binance news, right, um, you know, definitely with that going on, it's Jasmine still in the monitoring zone. But he said, yeah, Binance is suppressing Jasmine, but he feels like Jasmine is almost suppressing Jasmine. And I kind of agreed with that, right? You know, it, it almost seems like they're intentionally not letting this thing fly for a reason. I feel like they're still kind of getting everything set up for their partners to join, for companies to join. And, and that kind of ties into the information too, right? Or lack of information. You know, it just feels like they're, if you're looking at Astar, right, comparatively to Jasmine, you see Soda, he's always constantly tweeting. He's constantly disseminating information. I know Har is not dumb. I know he sees that and he could be doing something similar to that. It, it, it just seems to me that we're still waiting for something, right? There's something behind the scenes that, they're waiting on to really let this thing go. And it, whether that be the development of the ecosystem or piecing everything together, that's kind of where I'm leading into 2024. It's like, this is the year where they really need to show execution, right? They really need to show the community that, okay, the super wallet's going to be ready. Um, you know, Jasmine chain, their layer two to kind of connect everything that needs to be starting to get in place. This is the year really, you know, kind of leading up to the roadmap where we, we need to see this stuff to be in a good position for the upcoming bull run or just in general, you know, with the rest of the projects in Japan and kind of Asia. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. And it, it just really does feel like, like the marketing has to be intentional for a reason. Um, I, I'm curious like, if you guys think the same or, you know, what are your thoughts kind of like about that? I was going to say, I don't think the marketing is going to solve what their problem is. 
The problem is, is they haven't come out with the product yet. And I keep coming back to, they went down the road with their blockchain with centrality and found out that that wasn't going to work. <clears throat> I wonder how far down the road before they switch to make their own blockchain. Which also comes back to, I'm wondering if they're in the monitoring zone, because if they switch and they develop their own blockchain from scratch, the way he describes it, because Harris said when one of the dips posts that the super wallet is ready, I wonder if, if the reason why they're in the um, innovation zone as is, is do they have to retest and reprove since they went off and did their own blockchain, the security and the stability of the blockchain? I don't know how much that set them back. Because that was a really big change very late in the game. And I don't know how much new coding they had to do. I know they wanted to dip things to talk about how they had engineers in Europe helping them. Um, so the problem is not marketing. The problem is, is they haven't gotten their product out. I don't know if it's just in the final phases of polishing, if it's in testing, or where they're at on that. Yeah, that's right, Rob. And, and I think um, it, it's it's a lot for people to follow, too, right? Because just like you, you said, with do they have to rebuild the entire chain? The, the problem is now we're following three different chains entirely, right? There's Jasmine Chain, there's Jasmine Net, and now there's the NCC Credit Consortium. Um, plus, on top of that, I, I think, you know, Jasmine originally pivoted itself. And it's, I, it's probably still like this, but the Secure Knowledge Communicator and the Smart Guardian are blockchain ag agnostic, right? They don't care what chain they're on. They're, they're more of an IoT stack on top of it. Um, and then Jasmine Coin can be the fuel on top of that. So when you hear like the word consortium chain, are they even building it, right? We know, we know that they're involved in it. Obviously, they're a contributor, but they might not be the main builder. The consortium chain can be built if you actually go, and this is just an example, if you go to Green Carbon, um, the website whom they're partnered with, on their website, they mention that they're using blockchain technology for carbon tracking. Is that theirs? Is it Jasmine's? Nobody knows because the word consortium is very broad and we'll probably never know, honestly, until the day something happens and we then realize. But until then, it's, it's always just like kind of speculation and, and, and theory. Um, but it, it would be interesting to know the details. And I, I've been saying for a long time, I really wish they got just a, an English translator for at least one of the tech guys to give us a little bit more in-depth stuff. But that, that's unlikely. I, you know, you don't see Intel out there giving like daily tech demos. They, they do like a convention every year. And, and Jasmine's not like at that point. So. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the innovation zone is it, it, it's the elephant in the room, right? It highlights what's missing and what's wrong. And the part that, I, again, I think my theme of this call is frustration, right? Uh, you know, people want to know why I'm not posting, why I'm not doing videos. It's frustration. And it, it, it centers around things like that, right? So the innovation zone, you know, broadly, you've got a coin whose chart it, if you zoom all the way out, looks like it's it fully collapsed, right? You've got a uh, blockchain technology that no one can see. Uh, we have no blockchain statistics. There's no blockchain numbers on a website, on a web page, on anything. Um, there's nothing there. And so you've got an idea that started on Ethereum that tried to partner with Centrality that's now going to its own chain that there's no proof of nothing in reality, nothing to print, nothing to write home about. And we've got a management team that's quiet, right? And so when they're quiet, you know, that's a void and people start asking questions. Hey, what's going on? What's, what's the latest? What's the update? No one knows, right? Nobody knows. Um, you know, th those of us that were chosen to be ambassadors, None of us know anything. I have been completely in the dark since day one of accepting that, which is kind of a regret at this point, right? You know, it's, it's kind of like you got to, even if you're not ready, you got to give us something. And, and this is where even if, if you don't want a full-blown marketing manager, even just somebody like Akira who could do some daily posts of like, hey, you know, just want to let you know, we're still working on this, we're still working on that, this is in the works. 
Um, but the problem is, is it, it kind of goes flat and there's nothing there. And we're all waiting for the big news, right? And, and to kind of leapfrog onto Hara's other post the other day about this uh, promotion with this XT exchange, um, all the comments, <laughs> again, you know, I'm reading all the hate in the comments and they're like, this exchange is crap. You know, everything I read about it say it's not very good. Why are you even posting about this when the big rocks that the community wants to find out about, you know, is the Jasmine chain, the Jasmine wallet, the lockup. Hello? You know, give us anything here, even if you're not ready. Give me anything, anything to go on. And the weird thing is, you know, like behind the scenes, I mean, all I've seen is maybe one or two posts from somebody like Akira saying, hey, sorry for the silence. We're still working on it. Hope you're all doing fine. You know, it's like, well, whoop de doo man. You know, uh, at a time when the rest of the entire crypto market is kind of gearing up for the halving, um, you know, it's it's a missed opportunity by not putting out anything. You got to put out something. And they're not they're not doing anything. And, you know, like the, the, the frustration, you know, I'm sure you can hear it in my voice because I've been extremely frustrated with a lot of this is that I can see all the problems. I can tell them what the problems are. And if they're still not going to do anything, I mean, it's, it's kind of like all we've been riding this whole time is the market maker. And, and for as much as I think that dude looks like a complete nutcase, uh, his, his uh, company is doing a good job. I mean, they honestly are. I mean, yeah, yeah, the chart's down the last couple of days, fair enough. But prior to that, they've been building this thing for quite a while, right? So I think the market maker has been doing a good job. And the market maker only came about uh, because of their discussions there, meaning Hara's discussions with uh, Binance Japan, and Binance Japan saying, hey, you should get a market maker because your chart's collapsing, right? This is this goes back to the innovation zone. And so it's like, you know, they probably should have had a market maker all along, but they didn't, right? And, and you know, we're, we're hitting these bumps in the road unnecessarily. And what, what kills me is that if they actually listen to the community, actually listen to any of the ambassadors, um, maybe, maybe we wouldn't be at this point. You know, I, I said in one of my videos, and this is true, that I had reached out to Hara maybe like six, seven weeks ago. He, he read my uh, message I sent him. He never responded. Okay, so if you can't respond to me and I'm an ambassador, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, all I'm trying to do is make this thing work, right? Right. Uh, and I, I'm sure everybody else on the call is the same way, but, um, you know, I, I, I think their latest news, I'm, I'm hoping that they they finally start answering the big questions. They, they, they start addressing the big rocks, all the things that we really care about. I hope they start tackling those. But as of right now, they're just sort of dodging them. And there's a reason they just missed on the innovation zone yet again. Uh, and why we're still in it. I will say, I'm really frustrated with the project as well. And the only thing in the last couple of weeks that gave me the slightest bit of hope was when DIP went to Japan. Because for a while there, I was wondering if this project was even still alive, or was it just Harris sending out information? But the fact that there are some serious people working on this project, and they're showing up to the office every day, and they're doing stuff, and they're paying for the office space, and they're actually working at it, gives me some hope. But I'm beginning to question, how far away are they from actually giving us anything? And if they're going to let it all out in a landslide, I hope it's soon, because like I said, like you said, I'd like to get caught up in the having. This is supposed to be one of the best years for crypto, but that's the problem. It's not just marketing. they got to start producing a product product that people can see because we keep saying jasmine's not a meme coin jasmine's got real things behind it it's got real company commitments it's got real products but until they actually start producing the products it's all a smoke screen well yeah exactly and who, who's the blockchain advisor you know i i posed that question in videos who the hell is it right 
You look at a star, it's Soda. He's the obvious person. You look at Cardano, it's Hoskinson. And, you know, I was even thinking about Cardano earlier today, right? I've, I've compared Jasmine to Cardano numerous times. And look at Cardano. I mean, what do they have for real live products, right? That thing's been in development forever. But you know what? Hoskinson posts videos like every, every day, every other day. He, he just posted a, a picture today. He's wearing some stupid hat, right? So the point is, is that he's out there all the time talking about it, right? But with, with Jasmine, in you, exactly like you said, Rob, I mean, the real, real life product, the real life chain, who's even, who's putting that together, right? Like Hara tells us it's Jasmine Labs and Jasmine Labs is Hara's company. Okay, great. So who's actually working on this? Who's over there building it? Like, who's the team? Who are the people? Uh, is there something there? We need something to hold on to. And you know, I, I would say, not to be completely negative, is that usually when they're quiet, it's because they're working on something. So hopefully that does mean they're working on it now. But, you know, faith, faith in the wind only goes so far, right? And at some point, all of us want to know that our investment is going to pay off because I'll tell you what, there's some other projects I've been following just as long as Jasmine that have done a 10, 13x, right? And we're sitting here, and, and Jasmine's just kind of ho-humming along. Uh, where's it going, right? Where is the product? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel you, Kern. You're definitely very valid. I, I felt kind of the same way, you know. Uh, I assume the ambassador program, um, if anyone's wondering, is it was basically almost like a nod to our previous work that we've been doing and like supporting the company. That's my best bet as of what they're doing with that. Now is like, all right, you guys did a good job kind of getting info out there. We're going to give you this title. Um, you know, I felt the same way. I'm not going to lie. I felt frustrated because, you know, we assumed that this was going to be a more interactive program, but basically we had that initial um, space with like Hara and, we kind of introduced ourselves, and other than that, besides like one or two messages, like you said, you know, we really don't have any other information, um, you know, to give you guys of like new stuff, right? Um, so what I assume is happening now is that they're working on the roadmap for 2024. I put up there on the the jumbotron that um, who who tweeted it, Scan LZ, um, one of our guys in the community, basically said that. You know, the roadmap last year was released in February, um, just because, again, Q4 in Japan, it doesn't end until the end of March. So, you know, they're kind of in a different reality <laughs> to us in the West, right? So, you know, what we should be looking for now is the roadmap for 2024 coming up. Um, I'm hoping probably by first week of February, somewhere around there, like last year, that's going to be out. And really what I'm hoping for at this point is that, you know, the key stuff is in there. I put up there as well in the Jumbotron. Uh, let's see who asked that. You, King, Y-E-B-K, uh, basically asked about that Q4 lockup info. We don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being very honest and transparent. Um, the actual details of that lockup, we don't know yet. But that's the big question, right? I mean, Kerr Finance hit it on the head. We need to know the info with the token lockup. We need to know updates with the development of the super wallet. We need to know updates with the Jasmine chain, um, really how that's going to be connected together. My, my basic idea was that this year, this roadmap is going to be the year where it's all coming together. Um, if we don't get clarity about that, then I think that's, that's a reason for concern, but I feel like that's coming for the roadmap this year. It really has to be, frankly, with everything that they've done development wise and partnerships to lead up to this, this in 2025, these are the years where it has to come together. Uh, yeah. I, I, I expect the roadmap probably like February, March timeframe just to get the, the Japanese fiscal quarters, because I think that was like something that came up in the last roadmap is like, is this the, by the year or the fiscal quarters? Um, and on, on top of that, at least last year with some of the announcements, it set a little bit of a precedence for the lockup because the partnership with Biomedica um, mentioned specifically in the, at least the, the article um, that they're using Jasmine coin, right? They, they did, they need did it by name rather than 
what normally happens where you see like people post, well, there's no Jasmine coin here. Um, so at least it sets a precedent. And then I think they Harold mentioned somewhere maybe in the article or in the tweet that, you know, legally they were allowed to like move forward with it. So um, that is helpful moving forward um, to hopefully ease uh, the transition. But yeah, we totally need like the, at least the details. I, I don't think the community is really being um, that demanding with it. You know what I mean? Cause we're not saying like, you have to deliver this by then. We're just saying, can you let us know when you want to deliver it or plan? (laughs) So that's like the craziest part to me. Um, But hopefully 2024 is that year. We'll we'll find out, I guess, soon. See, I got the general feeling that the ambassadors was an honest. Oh, uh, one thing I I forgot to mention. um, I I didn't make a post about it. I just noticed it in the ether scan. Um, There was a test transaction from Coinbase to the Jasmine deployer wallet of 123 tokens, like I think like two, three months ago. And recently, I think like a week or two ago, they moved 198 tokens um, to to the deployer wallet again. So I don't know if that's a particular reason, right? Because they don't really announce anything or if that's testing maybe how the lockup could work. Um, again, we don't even know the details for how they plan on tracking the lockup and if it goes back into the deployers I, I, because quite frankly i don't think Hara knows <laughs> even if they explained it to him i was gonna say i i think the ambassadors was an honest screw-up i think someone in their office Hara, thought they were ready to go to the next phase and i think that's why you get the ambassadors for truly to put it out there and i think they had a setback and going with what you just said I wonder if they thought they could just create their own chain and roll it out there. And some of the major exchanges said, hold your horses. you got to prove that this thing's secure. And that moving it back and forth, maybe they're testing. Because remember how they're going to go from their net, um, where you can have your coins as they are, or transfer them over to their net. Maybe they have to prove that that whole system is going to work. Because when you switch to a whole new chain, you got to prove that this thing is bulletproof. And I wonder if that's taken longer than they expected. You back, JB? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't. One apologies if I talked over anyone. I, I lost uh, connection. I don't know if that was when I was talking or during or after. <laughs> No worries. Um, But I did want to kind of talk about to some of the recent um, partnerships with Jasmine, just because it did um, give me a little bit of good news with their kind of expansion goals. So recently uh, I'm pulling up what's the medium press release from Neopin in Jasmine. So basically they signed an MOU with Jasmine on December 11th. And um, what that is going to do is that, you know, they're going to participate, um, um, at uh, in the Jasmine mainnet, they're going to promote businesses such as RWAs and STO products related to the data from Jasmine. But the important part about this um, partnership is that you know they're they're connected to all exchanges and that they're going to promote mutual networking to expand their global eco- ecosystem in Japan, Korea, and the Middle East. So that's really good. Um, we've gotten news from Neopin in Korea. We've also gotten news in Kana Labs that they are going to actively promote in Korea. So it does seem like that Jasmine is trying to really um, expand in the greater Asian area around them. 